Good afternoon, Money Dot. Now we have Carly Crowhurst. We all know her and love her. Uh, talking about rates, uh, Carly, the ten-year now slipping again today down to two point seven seven percent. Here, is it actually being reflected in actual loans to homes? I would say no. I mean, we, you know, it's been a couple of days now that the bond's been coming down. Uh, rates have come off somewhat, but nothing in my opinion, to reflect where the bond's at. I feel like some of that has to do with investors anticipating next week's meeting with the feds and they've already done adjustments accordingly. So I don't I don't see rates really coming off a whole lot more. I think maybe we'll have this slight little dip and, and they'll be back on an upward trend next week after that Fed meeting. Are yeah, you know, that? I've been looking at homes in the Orlando area. I think we talked about it this morning and, um, you know, a month ago, you couldn't buy a home in Orlando for less than 400, but now a one or two bedroom condo, you can easily pick up for a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars $150,000. Are you seeing the same thing over there in the West Coast? I'm not seeing that here. Time on the market has doubled uh, okay. over the last few weeks. Um, you know, last I talked with Beth, I know it was about 19 days, mm. um, but I don't see values or price points really coming off as, as far as I can see. I think we're still kind of seeing upward trends and 19 days is still not a lot of time, right? It's not a lot of time, but, you know, we were at three days and then five days and then six. And so, you know, given the, the course of things over the past couple of years, that, that has doubled. Another thing that was really interesting and that Beth and I talked about is uh, people that are just kind of filling out the market, listing, how, listing their houses, kind of false inventory, if you will, uh, mm. just to see what kind of offers they can get with really no intention of selling. So with already a very low inventory, it makes me kind of wonder how what percentage of what's you know on the market is true true sale inventory. And so you think they're just testing the market so whether or not they could still sell their homes or what price they could get for, is that right? Yeah, that's what it sounded like from the data that Beth had pulled. So I just thought that was kind of interesting, uh, just being that we already have again low inventory. So what percentage of that is true true sellers? And that's interesting. I've never seen that before. So are you saying that? Uh, are you seeing the real, the real estate agents, I guess, in a lot of ways, are they just taking a whole bunch of people and saying, okay, let's see what we can get for your, uh, I, I believe that Zillow has this thing called make me move. Is that what's kind of being, we're seeing? I think people are just, like you said, testing the water, you know, okay. where, where, where am I at really? What can I get? You know, everything's for sale at the right price. So it's, it's just right. an interesting so market. Well, okay, so next week, uh, we know we're in the quiet period for the Fed. All right, so I'm going to push you to it. Uh, 50, 7,500. What are we doing here? What's the Fed going to say uh, next Wednesday? You know, based on the inflation data that came out for June, not reflecting what they were looking for, and that last increase of three quarters, I feel, I feel we could end up with a 1% increase at this point. I do. Okay, um, that's a big one. Um, I'm still thinking 75 basis points. Uh, it seems that the Fed's kind of taper to that but you may be right because the ecb did 100 points and russia did a reverse <laughs> they dropped it 150 uh basis points so uh i think that the world's changing just a wee bit here all right um with with that being said 100 basis points that would really 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 stop the housing market would you think I think it would have an effect, but it's not just that, right? I'm also hearing talks of a lot of layoffs within the lending industry and other industries as well. So that may push our data coming out of July in a more favorable way that okay. would impact next month's Fed meeting. Maybe, even, you know, because they were saying, oh, 75 basis points to a half these next couple meetings. So if they go big this time and inflation data for July shows lower than that could be a lower increase for the next one to two meetings. That is very, very interesting. Um, you know, a, a hundred and a hundred would be really bad. I would feel that I feel like the Fed has was was behind the curve and now they're trying to make up for it. Um, but the I don't feel like inflation is still as as strong as it was, say, a few months ago. Am I am I wrong here? I think spending has slowed down, but it's not showing in the CPI data coming out. Of course, that's only one piece of the puzzle, but it is a big driving factor that the feds do utilize to determine their, right. their decisions. So it's kind of the benchmark. Okay. So out of the houses that are selling, what are you seeing the biggest of? Uh, one bedrooms, five bedrooms, 10 bedrooms? 
Uh, for me personally, all the files I have that are purchases right now are all single family homes, um, a couple first time buyers, some families, all more than two bedrooms. I have no condos, no townhomes, not to say that's not happening, but people are still buying, even though data says a lot of people have kind of opted out of buying for right now. They're kind of sitting tight, same with sellers, but there's still movement in the market. And some of the news that I've been seeing also, you're right, I think is the, that the, the rich aren't buying second and third homes. Am I right on that? I think that, yeah, investment properties are probably slowed. Not, not to say it's still not a good time to do. I just think if you're buying investment properties, you need to do a little more due diligence. Okay. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're going to be slated for a recession, you know, um, data points that we're already in one, but it hasn't been official, made official. So, you know, if you're buying an investment home, one, I would be making sure where you're buying has infrastructure to support jobs. Because mm -hmm. the last thing you want is someone renting your house and then losing their job and not able to pay the rent. So right. that's a big factor. Rents are going up all across the country. So I think still historically rates are at an all time low. So your ROI is still going to be there if it's a home you're planning to hold on to long term. I think flipping has kind of gone by the wayside though. Right. So you're saying be careful picking the second or third home, um, but uh, make sure that you put it, buy it in a place that is uh, obviously lots of jobs and lots of opportunities. That's very good advice there. All right. Um, outside of the three bedroom homes that you're saying that the new buyers are buying, um, are they easily qualifying for that? Or, or are you having to be a little bit more, um, as, you, as you call it, a little, you have to be just a little bit more creative? Yeah, a lot more outside the box, especially when it comes to income, you know, with the higher rates, it does affect the debt to income ratios quite a bit. So I'm seeing quite a bit more FHA, which goes right. up higher, uh, VA, right, for higher debt to income, but also non-QM like bank statement loans, 1099 programs, DSCRs, which are no income right. for investment properties. So yeah, we're having to get a little more creative. How do you sell a home with no in, no money coming in, a second and third home? Yeah, it's a DSCR program. It does require more down payment, 20, 25%. Okay. Uh, so that, that's kind of the caveat. A lot of people don't have that cash flow. They want to do a, a three and a half to 5% down. So you know, that program won't, won't work for lower down payments. Uh, it does require a little bit higher FICO, but basically no income stated. It's a 30-day asset verification. It's a pretty easy loan to do. It just cannot be on a primary owner occupied house. So. I know that uh, Creed's looking to buy a second home here in Florida. So I want to push him off to you to uh, get that loan for him. Yeah, absolutely. They're a great program. Uh, rates are a little bit higher, though, one to two percent higher than a standard conventional VA or FHA because it is a more outside the box non QM, which is non qualified mortgage that doesn't get sold off to Fannie or Freddie or any of those things. So those portfolios come with higher rates. All right, Carly, and we'll see you and Beth on uh, Making Sense. I love it. I'm sorry I haven't seen it last time, but I'm uh, looking forward to it. And I'll see you right back here next week. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye, Carly. Bye.